Well, this is the last video in our SHOT Show 2017 series. This is my very first SHOT Show I was ever able to go to. It was everything I hoped it would be, uh, and really more in a lot of ways. And I just want to kind of do a wrap up for you of uh, the whole experience, what I learned, what I didn't, uh, um, what I got out of it, what is going to happen because of going for the channel and where we're going, um, you know, as a group here and as a family and, you know, continuing on in the, the, the thought process of systems and how gear fits into our systems, thinking through systems of life, uh, th thinking through, you know, just how to make life easier and better and ultimately helping you guys to stay equipped in your life and stay prepared in your life for whatever may whatever life may throw at you and so um really the shot show was awesome and we will have over at the homepage on youtube uh, a playlist that says shot show 2017 i think there's like 25 to 30 different videos i tried to shoot real tight videos this time because i didn't really know what to expect it was only myself it was all kind of last minute when i finally got accepted to go because it's close to the public um, so i was able to go as media that's why i was able to do that and so I, I was I was really going mostly for the connection side of things and sure if I got some videos that's great so we got plenty of videos but they were pretty short and I tried to do that on purpose just kind of get a feel for the whole system and how things work and how people act and interact uh, at SHOT Show and so in the future next year you know I definitely plan on going and um in that in going next year I, I really hope to have at least one to two cameramen so then i can really interact with people more that are showing their products and i can ask them more questions maybe if they forget details i can ask them to really pull that out of them because i know some of the videos were kind of detail light uh in the shots show series but if you haven't seen them all there are a lot in there there's lots of different stuff went to a lot of different booths and that's really what i want to touch on make sure i use my notes today trying to be a little bit more uh, methodical in some of the videos that we do but so, some of the things for me going to shot show was um the connections man were the connections awesome uh in particular getting to spend time with a lot of uh, different youtubers in particular um david from ultimate survival um tips was amazing uh really just kind of welcomed me as part of the family of youtubers you know and uh, took me along got me involved in a lot of different uh, stuff he was doing on his page which he has a much larger channel i definitely recommend going and checking him out i'll have a link in the description below uh, as well as tim from everyday tactical vids he and i had known each other a little bit just through conversations and different things like that uh, prior to shot show but um yeah it was just so awesome to hang out with him and spend time with him as well and uh, all the other youtubers that i got to meet from budget bug out uh to ben and brian and uh even uh, I Spy uh, 0099 got to meet him, really cool guy. Uh, the late Boy Scout, you know, I mean, we had a blast. Got to hang out after you know the the show was over every night. Did different things together. Got me meals a couple times, and really, uh, it was just a blast. And again, um, being able to just immediately feel welcome and at home with that group of people, where really for myself, I was one of the smaller channels represented there uh, at Shot Show in comparison to viewership, so to speak. Um, but to, I, you know, I never felt like I was, you know, the 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 little, you know, little brother who was just tagging along or something. I really felt like part of the family, and that's because of those guys, um, and uh, particularly David and Tim, just making me feel really welcome and, and really at home. As well as running into to viewers, you know, I ran into several different viewers who uh, were able to go. Uh, I met Eddie and his wife Jenny. Um, amazing people. Got to just spend some time with them and talk with them about life, and got to pray with them at the end of the, uh, before we parted ways. Got to meet um, one of our viewers from Germany, Stefan, um, Stefana. I don't know how you pronounce it exactly, but uh, amazing guy uh, from Germany. I got to talk to him for about 15 minutes and had just a great time with him, uh, and, and it was uh, just. Uh, an amazing experience, so much fun um, to be able to, to spend time with these people. Jacob Peterson, uh, I, I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm sure I'm forgetting some people. If I do, I'm sorry. But, I mean, the people was just so awesome. Ethan Becker spent 40 minutes shooting the breeze with Ethan Becker. Spent like 30 minutes talking to Joe Flowers uh, and then a few minutes talking to Matt Graham, you know, from Dual Survival. So, I mean, it was just awesome to meet these people who I've seen on YouTube and then to, to experience their personality uh, live there, you know, right there with them. And they're, they're the same people. They're just as genuine. They're just as loving. They're just as um, genuine as you would see on any one of their videos on TV or on YouTube or anywhere else that you may see them, which is just so cool.
some of the the gear items I just wanted to touch on that really stood out to me that I saw that I was really excited about and just kind of the the atmosphere when I would go to a booth um, was really cool particularly if I had a relationship with the company it was awesome to to spend some time with them particularly uh, a shout out to the guys at VanQuest I think I spent like an hour at their booth and I didn't even shoot video that day I just hung out with them got to know them uh, spent time with them some of the the greatest guys in the industry I think and just a, a, an amazing um, company that when you show up at their booth, you feel like family right away, which is just so cool. I, that that was one of the highlights was just hanging out at the VanQuest booth. And one day I just didn't shoot video and just hung out with them. And just it was like I was hanging out with buddies that I'd known for years, which was so cool. But um, definitely uh, that was one, you know, and just uh, some of the innovative stuff that VanQuest has got going on. Steel Will, holy cow, literally. And, and several people I know who, um, uh, my brother, um, our cameraman Brian, I mean, um, my buddy Jason and many others, including myself, you know, almost every single product that Steel Wheel is producing this year, I'm like, holy crap, that's awesome. Holy crap, that's awesome. I want it. I want it. I want it. Not just to test and review, but like I would pay my own money to get it because it's that good and such a high value for what you're getting, which was fantastic. And to meet Boris uh, and, and the, the crew over there was amazing. You know, they reached out to me before they even really started their company and I wasn't, you know, the biggest uh, uh, game in town, so to speak, but they liked how we did videos and reached out to me before they even launched their line. So to be able to finally meet him in person, spend time with him, great guy, great, great company. It was just so cool. Um, spend some time with the guys over at 511, uh, Michael and the crew. Uh, that was so cool that they recently reached out to me and, uh, were willing to work with again. I, I was just, I was just humbled by the fact that people want to work with, a channel like us, which I believe that we put put out great content, and that's probably part of the reason why. But I know that that there are plenty of other people on YouTube with much larger viewerships. But to, it shows that they're not that a lot of companies aren't just looking for the viewership; they're looking for the quality of the review and the quality of um, the people testing out the gear and just that that behind the scenes thing, which was, which was awesome. So um, just seeing some of that type of stuff, and uh, again, hanging out with Joe Flowers and Matt was a total blast down at the Condor booth. I mean, that was that was so awesome. Uh, meeting Craig, you know, Craig uh, over at Tops and just the Tops crew, you know, they were willing to, to give me and give us the chance here to test out some of their blades early on before they were really all that known in the industry several years ago. And before I was really getting my legs under me uh, as well, they were willing to work with us over here, which was awesome. So it was just cool to meet them and see some of the stuff they got going on. Uh, Jeff from CRKT, uh, Jeff Park was his name. He had one of the coolest designs at SHOT Show, and he was just a super nice guy. He, I was actually filming the video for the CRKT booth, and he interrupted me. And at first, I was kind of like, dude, I'm shooting a video here. And then when I started talking to him and he showed me his design, I was like, holy crap, hold on. I'm going to mic you up, and we have got to include you in this video. Uh, so Jeff was an awesome guy. Very first knife he's ever designed. It was literally one of the best folders in design that I have seen at SHOT Show. That was, so that was super cool uh, to meet Jeff. And um, let's see, you're just kind of thinking through it, uh, wanting to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, other things, you know, just gear thing, uh, things that I saw, you know, like the Utica Knife Company, I'd seen them, or Cutlery Company, I'd seen them on Knife Center like a week earlier before I left for SHOT Show, and I was like, man, I got to test out their stuff. It looks like they're hitting a great price point, which is some very basic, simple, but high quality USA made, 1095, molded plastic, you know, she's. Um, just looks like a very simple, good knife for people who are kind of on a budget, you know, and uh, it was funny. I was actually going to a different booth. I stopped, I was looking at my map and I turned sideways and boom, there's the Utica knife company or a uh, Utica cutlery uh, booth with the knives that I wanted to test out. So I just turned and was like, boom, and introduced myself, got to talk with them. Um, and that was just a cool line. And those are some sweet blades I'm really looking forward to uh, as well. I'm looking forward to the clothing that 511 is producing. They're, they're producing some, uh, high speed, low drag, I guess, if you want to, to call it that, um, clothing, you know, so that it doesn't look tactical, but it still offers you, you know, like hidden pockets or deeper pockets for different things and, and just all that type of stuff. So, so really looking forward to some of those things and seeing what, what happens with that. Uh, Leatherman, you know, it's cool that they came out with a plain edge as well as serrated, a small pocket knife based off of the Skeletool. I think that's going to sell huge and I can't wait to review that. Uh, and the fact that they did a serrated and plain edge at launch, which is awesome. I think companies are really starting to get that, that combo edges aren't maybe as popular as they once were and that plain edges have really caught on and are really 
uh, something that the market wants. So that was really cool. Um, I'm kind of mixed on their juice split, which is basically they removed the pliers on the juice and then took the two arms and you know, you can buy two tools now. I think the one tool with the serrated, full serrated blade and then the plain edge will sell well because it's basically an, a dual bladed knife. Uh, and I think it'll sell overseas really well because it's a slip joint basically, you know, it's not, it doesn't have a lock or anything. But the other piece of that with it had like a corkscrew, a bottle opener and scissors. I just don't see a need for that. So I think that's kind of like a double-edged sword. I think part of that idea is good. I think part of it's not. So we'll see, I'm, I'm gonna get those and, and do videos on those as well. Uh, um, so that, that's kind of a, a, a double-edged sword there, I think. And uh, also to hear that, you know, Condor Knife and Tool is upgrading their steels, to their stainlesses. They're gonna start integrating 440C, which I believe is a huge upgrade over 420 high carbon. I like 440C when the heat treat's done right. And as long as they do the heat treat right, I think it's any, it's much better than, um, uh, I would say, your average OS 8 or your 420 high carbon or your 8CR 13 MOV. So that's exciting as well as beginning to integrate some 1095 into their smaller blades. I think those still keep 1075 because it's a really shock resistant steel for their larger like you know machetes and choppers and that type of thing but to see in the next year or two a lot of 1095 being integrated will be awesome for the designs and the but and the price that we're already seeing you know and, and since they're produced in El Salvador I don't see their prices going up very much uh, they may but I don't see why that would be a, uh, that big an issue and bulk steel honestly is not that um, difference in price, heat treating can affect some of that and all that. But um, that's that's just some of the stuff. Uh, finally, I don't want to forget this. It was awesome to run into Kelty. And um, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know, I'm much more of a low profile guy. And I think the whole industry is seeing that. We saw that at the VanQuest um, booth. We saw that at the Maxpedition booth that they're really trying to cut off a lot of the molly, a lot of the tactical feel. Still giving you some of the tactical capability of a pack and the durability of that heavier Kodora, but then also cutting down and giving you water bottle pouches and giving you options and, you know, really like low profile molly and that type of thing. And Kelty is a company that's been around forever. They're actually a, a local company for me uh, in the the same state which is awesome and then um to see them starting to integrate some heavier uh Kodora nylon material into their already well-known packs i'm really excited to test out as well so guys, uh, in conclusion, uh, I, again, I just want to thank you for coming over here, always supporting the channel. You know, I wouldn't be able to go to SHOT Show and be able to meet these people, experience this, go to the industry and see what is up and coming this year and pick and decide, hey, what can we review here at the channel um, Because without you guys, without you, the viewers, coming back week after week and watching. I will, I will never stop thanking you for what you do. You make this channel and everything that happens here possible and worthwhile to me, the one who produces these these videos for you. Um, things I'm going to change for next year at SHOT Show definitely would be, um, I only got to go for a couple days because again, I'd never been, I didn't know what I was going to experience. I don't know if I was going to go there and just kind of be like, this is a waste of my time or, oh my gosh, this is totally worth it. I, I feel it is absolutely worth it. So I am going to invest my time in the future and I'm going to take the whole week. I only went for a couple days this time. So I want to make sure that I'm going to hit range day next year. This year, I basically didn't test out or look at any firearms that because this year in 2017, I really want to amp up not only my knowledge of firearms and my training of firearms, um, but also uh, just the the reviews and the videos you know that we're going to do uh, here at the channel, so that next year in 2018 we can really begin to look into testing out new firearms that are hitting the market. We're going to test out some new firearms, including like the Mossberg um, 590 short or uh, shockwave. That's what it's called. It's a 14 inch barreled shotgun that passes underneath any tax regulations or anything you need to do. Um, so it's basically a sawed off shotgun that somehow is, uh, you know, totally legal. And uh, we're going to be, I'm going to try and get my hands on that and test that, that out this year. But really next year, when I go to SHOT Show, um, where this year I basically almost didn't go to any firearm booths. The, next year I will go to into a lot more firearm as well as, as I said a little earlier, um, interacting a little bit more with the, the people behind the booths and asking them questions because I'll have somebody else with me holding the camera so I can be in front of the camera more and actually inter, uh, interacting with those people showing off their, their products. So that'll be... Um, two things that I see that will definitely be different in you know, just a longer time there because it was totally worth it. And if you ever have the chance to go to SHOT Show and you're wondering, is it worth it? It is super cool. Um, and uh, if you're you know, an aspiring YouTuber and you're, you're like, should I go? Yes, you should. Um, it, it is a, 
a once in a lifetime opportunity, honestly. So um, guys, thank you so much for coming over here, checking out the channel. Again, check out the playlist below with about 30 different, um, uh, what's it called? Shot show videos, lots of uh, stuff. And you're going to see a lot of stuff that are in those videos being tested this year. Um, uh, as we go through and begin to test out the gear that we saw. So always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we will see you out there.